Hi guys, uh, today we're having a look at the view scan from Creaform. So this is one of their handy scan, high-end 3D scanners. Um, it's been around for the market for a while, um, but we have one in the office and I just want to give you a quick tour of how it looks and how you're supposed to, to scan with one of these advanced scanners. And of course what it can do. So later on you will see um, the, the scanning itself and the result and I will probably be able to give you a downloadable uh, file as well. So uh, let's go. Okay, so in the box here we have, let's see, we have of course uh, the scanner itself. So this is the uh, view scanner. It looks kind of cool. <laughs> it's like an e ET or something. Um, I'm just going to move this box away for now. So uh, this is the, the handheld unit. Um, so you have two video cameras in the front, uh, which uh, are surrounded by LEDs. And then you have here in the middle for this scanner, you have a texture camera as well. Let's see if we can get some, some light on that. Um, down here you have the handle where you well, place your hand and you also have a trigger. And down here we have the laser. So th this one creates the, the laser cross that the, the cameras then pick up. So on the top here we have a few uh, buttons. We have the texture on off and laser um, which helps you guide your, your scanner. You also have two LED lights um, which you can see uh, which helps you keep track so you don't have to look at your screen all the time. You can see um, different indications on these if they are if you are in range of scanning the object or if you lost tracking for example. So and also here on the side we have the uh, firewire uh, cable in. So you have to have a PCI Express converter. Um, we'll get into that later. Also in the box we can find a handy dandy support. So this is for the, the scanner to rest on. Something like like this. Uh, we also have the fire wire which is a three meter wire if I'm not mistaken. Um, on, the, on one end you have a power splitter so you have the fire wire and then you have external power. So you also get the external um, power support. And then on this end you have the other end of the fire wire which goes into the scanner. You also get a few um, transformation uh, power supply adapters for different countries since this is a scanner to go. Um, and you also get the PCX Express card. So this is for a laptop. So you can use for example um, um, a HP EliteBook or something to, to be able to, to scan. So just plug this in. Uh, Express card 64 I think it's called. Uh, this is Firewire 800. Yeah, so you can just plug in that uh, to your scan. There's also uh, adapters for stationary computers as well. Um, let's just move this away for a second. So also in the box you can remove this soft padding, which is a very nice. Uh, underneath that you have a uh, calibration board and you also have some documentation regarding your scanner. So here's a few facts about this scanner, uh, reports from calibrations and so on. And this, uh, this plate here is a calibration plate which you can take with you to be able to do some, um, uh, some f uh, software tune-ups uh, of the scanner depending on temperatures and, and vibrations and age of the scanner you will you might need to do some some fine-tuning um, for different locations where you're scanning just so you get the optimal optimal scan data um, so that's about it um, well let's have a look at the scanning uh, okay yeah all right so let's go um, so in the software I will just click here on on start scanning so and pick up the scanner of course. So here you can see on the object um, we have a few markers. So this is for the scanner to be able to position itself in, in 3D space. Um, so here we go. I will, I'm just clicking on the scanner, uh, pressing the trigger. Um, 
I just noticed that uh, we're missing texture, so I'm just gonna pause here and enable it. There we go. Texture, different resolution, like so, and we're on. Okay, yeah, so there we go. Um, so let's do our scan again. So what's happening here is, uh, as you can see, when I move the scanner around, so on the display you will see how we kind of move around the object as well. So uh, you also have a, a range detector on the left side. Um, so if I back off too much, it will stop tracking, so it won't scan. Now I have to go quite far away, so now, now we can't scan anymore down here. Um, the same th thing happens if I go too close, so it will pick up. And then if I go too close, it will, will stop track as well. So you can see I can move it, but it doesn't move on the screen. So optimal distance is over here. So we have these LED lights as well that, that will help you. Um, so in the software, you can see we're reading scan data, um, getting a lot of good details, uh, color as well, since, since I chose it. Uh, but the cool part here is that the scanner is, is handheld. So I can move this around, I can place it over here, and I can scan. I can move around, I can even pick it upside down. This is great for being able to reach different uh, areas and well, it, it's like painting with a paintbrush. But what's also unique is that since it's real-time tracking, I can actually hold the object and scan it while, <laughs> while I'm holding it. So it doesn't really care about vibrations or anything like that. It's not, it's not a measuring table, this is a handheld scanner and it does it great. Um, the only thing I have to be careful here, here is not to scan my own hand. <laughs> um, so let's see, I'm gonna continue scan here to get some extra details. Um, we can just stop and zoom in on this as well. Let me just get some more on the top here. So the, the trick is to move around a lot and to um, you, uh, you can see the, the red lines on the on the display. So the, the goal is to, well, basically to to um, to let them travel all over the model. Then you will have a good good measuring results. So let's just get a few extra details over here. Should be pretty good pretty soon. Something like that. Okay, let's stop here over here. Now, since I don't have an SSD drive in this computer, uh, this step takes a few extra seconds. So if we look at the monitor, monitor instead. So there we go. So here you can see the, uh, the, the preview model. Um, so we choose a kind of low resolution for the texture. So it's, we have 150 DPI and we could have lots more if we wanted to. In this case, we just really want to get some simple results, but it's uh, it's pretty good. So if you want to see the mesh level, so first off, um, we chose to have a mesh level of, of one millimeter, uh, which means that every triangle uh, has an edge that is one millimeter. So if we look at the, the triangles here as well, as you can see, it's very detailed. Now this is a wooden box around 20 by 20 by seven centimeters. And we're getting extremely flat surfaces. I mean, we, we can see how the grains um, kind of show up in the model, but it's it's not that bad. What we can actually do here, uh, which takes a few seconds to do, um, but we can actually change the res resolution to a higher one. So behind the meshing, as a, um, the software uses um, po basically cloud points uh, or a point cloud. Um, so it's just bombarded with, with um, points uh, which have a much greater resolution than, than one millimeter or even 0.2 millimeters. They have something like 0 0.005 millimeters per cubic, cubic meter. Um, so that why, that's why we can change the resolution. I will give you a, a quick sample of that as well. But um, 
Here's, for example, we can see um, some more geometry related models. So you can see here how, um, how the grooves are, are deforming the mesh. Let's see if we can twist this around. Yeah, 3D, 3D is, is really motion. You can get really motion sick in here. Um, okay, so something like that. Um, let's just display this as triangles again. So the fun part is that I can pick this up and start scanning again, which I will show you. Um, so we're just gonna do that. So I'm just going to show that and we can pick up the scanning again. So I just have to click on, on scan and it will start up. We can go over to this display and we're ready to, to start scanning. So I'm going to choose one of the sides over here where I have a, lot, uh, a few more dots. And I'm just going to start scanning, move up to this side. Let's see here. And we're gonna move into the to the inside as well. So there we go. Now we're scanning on the inside of the box as well. So um, so you might not see it, but I placed some markers inside as well. It's difficult doing this in in all the angles at once. There you go. Then I'm scanning on the on the inside as well. Something like that. So let's pause that as well and put down the scanner for now. All right, so here we go. Uh, so here's the uh, part of the, the box scan. Uh, I will continue scanning this and make sure to get all the details or well, most of them so I can, so I can make that downloadable for you guys. Um, well, when we're done with that, I just want to show you how we can uh, work with this, for example. We can do some, uh, I think the projection is automated right now. So if we want, we can, we should be able to, well, we can do a cubic mapping, for example. So it will map the, the textures uh, according to a cube, which is good. Uh, let's see, we can apply that. Well, well, the mapping's goal is to be able to, to make a more easy model to work with. Otherwise, it's just um, triangles and everything like that. So if we just open the image right now, um, whoops, I mean that we can save it. Let's just save it as a JPEG and we'll be able to... Um, so since it has 24 bit of data, um, I think it really wants to use TIFF, but I, <laughs> I just want to show the... Um, the model itself. Well, we can look, look at it later. So, um, what we can do from here? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I can view it over here. So here it is, uh, mapped uh, as a cubic. So when we export a um, OBG, for example, it will be um, it will be ready uh, mapped for taking into a software. So as you can see, if 50 uh, DPI is quite low. But we can still make out the, the wooden parts. If I increase this, we will be able to, to see, I mean, basically everything. It's a, it's a close-up photography. Uh, there are a few artifacts from scanning. Uh, so over here, I didn't, um, I didn't scan past the surface enough. So that's why we get these, these patterns. So I need to, to, to keep on scanning to, to collect all the texture and the mesh data that, that's needed. Uh, so let's close that down. So if we're ready here, uh, as I mentioned before, we can change the uh, mesh as well. So we can change the re uh, resolution of the meshing, which might just lead to that you need to scan more because if we have if we have two points here, so one point here and one point here, for example, that means that uh, we, we might be able to mesh a triangle over here. But if, if we set up the se uh, settings over here so that we, we need to have points at each, let's say 0.2 millimeters. 
So then we have to have points here, 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 and here. So it's very difficult um, to see now how much data we need. So I'm just going to show you an example of how it looks when I remesh this. Let's see. Um, like that, and I will probably need to cut because it, it can take a few minutes. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I'm not sure if you can, can really see the difference right now. Uh, but you can see here we have... Um, we have 0.5 millimeters. Um, if we go in and maybe look at the um, the triangles, I think you can compare those to to the ones before, and you will see that we have a lot more details in the geometry. Now this object isn't that exciting because we have a lot of flat surfaces, but it's great for measuring the. Um, so if you take this this um, rectangle for example, you can really uh, map out the the surface and how how it moves. Okay, so there we go. Um, now uh, I will continue scanning here and make you uh, a few examples. But if you're ready, you can basically save the mesh here. So you can export as SDL, 3D points, wavefront, OBG, uh, CPrint file if you have a, a 3D system C printer. Uh, you can also uh, create the VRML, which is a normal standard format, and in PLY as well. So you have a few different kind of formats here, uh, which you can export to. So I will continue with these scans and, and um, you should see some links in the, in the end. Um, well, I think that's everything um, I can say about 3D scanning. Uh, with, this, with the scanner, we've, we've gone through all the tools. Um, you, you, can, you saw how, how easy it is to use and how, how you can just move around the object or even hold the object in your hand. So compared to pressure point scanners, uh, which you have to put in a vibration-free room and to measure and everything like that. This is a more easy and quick solution. You get an extremely good quality result within an hour, instead of having to take the part to a factory, uh, place it on a table and then try to scan it. So here you have a, a portable scanner. Both the computer and scanner fits in a, a suitcase that you, you can have in, in basically in the cabin of an airplane. So it, it's really easy to just to take out to, to your, maybe to your customer, you take it out to a factory and scan uh, machine tools or you scan um, plastic molds or you might scan a, a car or something like that. So you can get really fine detail to, to work from. Well, the, the only drawback with scanner is that everything is delivered in, in mesh file. So you really can't do anything about, for example, um, if you have, you want to use solids or uh, NURBS files and then you have to convert the STL files. So it's great for, for continuing work with. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, the video. Um, if you have any questions about the scanner, just drop down a comment and I'll reply as soon as I can. Um, this scanner is actually for sale, so you should visit creativetools.com. I will give you a link in the description as well. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe so you get more content like this. And, um, well, take care. Bye.